This week on Maker Update, an encouragement machine, New York's call for makers, wearable sanitizer from MIT, mini Burning Man, and tracking stats with the matte black PCB stat. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you're hanging in there and staying safe, especially with all the fires. I feel like it's the world trying to tell me to stay indoors right now, and I'm listening, and if you're in a similar situation and you could use a little uh, inspiration to make use of your indoor time, check out the project of the week. On his YouTube channel, Jay from JBV Creative shows how he created this encouragement machine. It's a mechanical 3D printed and laser cut design that presses a stamp down on a reel of paper that is guided through to a pair of scissors and sliced. The extra clever bit here that for me makes this a work of art is that the stamp says you can't do it, but the machine is calibrated so that the scissors first cut off the T and then cut off the rest of the edited encouraging note. I also love that the machine itself, the process and challenges involved in creating it, coding the microcontroller, timing the motors, the machine is really the testament that you can do crazy impossible things. The fact that it prints it out for you is just icing on the cake. Jay hasn't shared the code or design files for this, but considering it's more of a one-off mechanical sculpture, I don't blame him. Check out the whole video and give him a sub if you're feeling generous. Jay's channel is brand new and I'm excited to see more projects from him. Now for some news, the Empire State Maker Fair has opened their call for makers. This is an unprecedented new online maker fair from New York. Basically all of the regional maker fairs in New York are banding together to create what will hopefully be a massive online event. The online fair takes place across two days, October 16th and 17th. Makers from all over the world are encouraged to apply. You could showcase a project, give a talk, give a demonstration, or teach a skill. The application deadline is September 20th. Hackaday has announced their second circuit sculpture contest. If you've been looking for an excuse to try your hand at circuit sculpture or freeform circuit design, this is your chance. Awards will be given in four categories, most functional, most beautiful, best video, and best use of a jig. Issue 34 of Hackspace Magazine is now available. The issue focuses on Adafruit feather boards and programming in CircuitPython. The big treat for me though is that they included a write-up of my VK01 cocktail machine. If you can't get your hands on a physical copy, I have a link in the description where you can download the full PDF. Now for more projects on Hackaday, check out how Albert Fan made this battery powered device for manually keeping track of stats during tabletop role playing games. The design was specifically made for the game Hyper Light Drifter, but there's no reason it can't be repurposed for other games too. By squeezing the edges of the device, you can advance the LEDs up and down. Now what makes it so unique is that the top section is made from three printed circuit boards stacked on top of each other. There's the top layer with all the graphics and masked off squares for the LEDs to shine through. Then there's the middle board which just acts as a spacer with areas carved out for the LEDs and the circuitry of the bottom board which has all the components. The bottom board also has six momentary switches on the left and right side which are what actually get triggered when you squeeze the marked areas on the top board. It's all super clever and I think it's great to see some of these badge life techniques make their way into other projects. For those who dare to venture out of their house, the MIT Media Lab has an official guide on how to make this wrist mounted sanitizer. You can fill this up with either isopropyl alcohol or hand sanitizer. It works in two modes. The first will just dispense sanitizer into your hands when you press the first button. The second button activates a proactive mode which will spray out sanitizer automatically when it detects that you're about to place your hand on something, like a doorknob. You can find the code, the SDL files, and the bill of materials on the MIT Media Lab GitHub page. And while it doesn't seem like we really need anything else burning at the moment, perhaps you'd like to have your own personal backyard mini Burning Man. And I mean like the actual guy, not the hallucinating in your underwear bit, I feel like we've all been doing that since March. On Instructables, Brian Serenisi demonstrates how to assemble this laser cut Burning Man kit by Trammell Hudson. There are dozens of little pieces to fit and glue together, but the result looks pretty great and hopefully it looks too good to burn because seriously, no more fires. Now for some tips and tools. Do you want the ultimate one of a kind, truly tactile keyboard? In her quest for customization, Billy Rubin designed these embroiderable 3D printed keycaps. Now you can custom stitch your own letters and characters for the pinnacle of luxury keyboard feel. On the Cool Tools channel, Shawn Michael Reagan demonstrates his favorite set of transfer punches. 
I honestly had never seen transfer punches used before or understood their purpose, but now I get it. If you need to duplicate the exact size and position of one hole to another surface, these are the way to go. When it comes to bang for your NeoPixel buck, the Hub 75 type of LED matrix are an unbeatable value compared to making and wiring the same grid from LED strip. The problem is, they're hard to drive and they use an uncommon data connector. The Smart LED Shield for Team C4 solves this problem. The $25 shield is made specifically for driving these types of panels and leveraging the speed and power of the Team C microcontroller. It's on crowd supply now and ships in January. On YouTube, I was excited to see these 3D printed pneumatic actuator designs by the Suzumori Endo Lab at Tokyo Tech. These designs all flap around by quickly switching the path the air takes inside of it. Each pathway shuts off and redirects the path before it. There's some cool ideas here that you could use with a simple low voltage air pump. Untested, Daryl reviews the new $2,000 Piopoli Phenom L SLA resin 3D printer. Resin 3D printers have become very popular this year now that small ones have become more affordable. They're especially appealing to anyone making small parts that can benefit from the extra detail you can get from SLA. The Phenom is the first large format consumer priced SLA printer I've seen. Daryl shows off some incredible cosplay prints including a full helmet. It's still a lot of fussing and cleaning and soaking, but it's very interesting to know that this is another option out there for people who want to print large pieces at a high resolution. Check out Daryl's full video review. In my workshop though, I've been finding myself working with a lot of metal stock recently. One of the hardest parts of working with metal is finding safe and reliable ways to cut it. An angle grinder is the most common solution, but they can be scary for alternatives Yonatan24 has an instructable that details 10 ways to cut metal without an angle grinder. Some are compromises and some are hacks, but all of them are worth knowing about. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this video by Lady Ada showing how to search for something as common as a through-hole resistor. While these are common, they also come in a disorienting amount of options. Lady Ada shows how to use different filters and checkboxes to whittle things down. She also offers up a cool trick for when you found the part you want, say a 10K resistor with a part number 10K QBKND, you'll notice that the part number in this case has the value in it. So if you want a similarly spec'd 47K resistor, you can type in the 10K part number and replace the 10 in the part number with 47 and chances are you'll find the 47K version of the same resistor. It's a small thing, but it sure beats drilling down search filters for dozens of different resistor values. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, get on the Maker Update email list so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons and a big, big, big thanks to DigiKey Electronics for making this whole show possible and for having all the stuff to make these projects possible. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.